From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. He had a little bit of the turnover bug last week. Three interceptions. Not an absolute disaster, but another one here. Do you start to get a little worried? You worry about your team as a whole because you have to find a way to make those interceptions quote-unquote go away, and that means your defense. They've got to go out there on sudden change and at least hold people to field goals. But if that keeps happening, they lose confidence in the quarterback, and then no one plays well. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll lead here to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. But one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you can give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. The Texans send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Matt Ryan and the Falcon offense set to get going again. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown, but those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. They'll be hoping to make it a three to one ratio here in the second quarter. Defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. Now it's Ryan. Here's Sanu on the catch. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Yeah, baby. A gain of six yards. And it's third down. The Falcons on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and four. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to make it fourth down. I know it's a cliche, but he's a Stanford kid, so his ability to read and diagnose and make a play, you kind of figure he's got that, and he does. Nice play by Justin Reed getting near the line of scrimmage and making the tackle, but he can play the deep ball as well. Patrol center field, I just love all of his skill attributes, and when you really need him, he can jump into the slot and cover guys as well. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? 
The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team me. anymore. I just cut him. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? win first down so that can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. On second and nine. Watson. And that's complete to Adams. That catch good for only a yard and it'll be third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. The Texans send the punter out. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Getting set to go again, Mohamed Sanu is marching back onto the field now. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away. From oh, it's out. Smith lost it. And the Texans scoop it. And he will bring this down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. He doesn't give many opportunities to carry it, so he's got to maximize. In this case, after dropping it like that, I think his number is going to go way down. What do you think? Yeah, and sometimes those fullbacks, let's just be frank, they usually don't have the hands that the running back does. And it's hard for them because they do so much blocking that a lot of times their hands actually get beat up in the process, and it's hard for them to hold down to the football. That is caught. Hopkins for the Texans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins. His first touchdown on the year as they are able to cut into that lead. Well, that didn't take long. The turnover instantly almost turning into points. And when that happens, a lot of teams have the mentality of let's strike right now. You've got them off balance after the turnover or the takeaway. Let's go get it. And that's exactly what they did. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Getting set to go again, Mohamed Sanu is marching back onto the field now. He's the star wide receiver, and he's doing his thing so far here into the second quarter. And how you get distinguished as a star is each and every week performing to a high level no matter what they throw at you because you're always wanting to take him out of the game if you're a defensive team. How do you press him, double him, triple him? All those things, but the best players show up each and every week. Solid games and some spectacular ones. And he has showed up time and time again. The throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. 
I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up a run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Airing it out, looking for Ridley. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. They decide to air it out a little bit on that play, take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in and tip it away. Throwing again on second and 10, Ryan. And that gonna be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you gotta worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. Here's Ryan. He's got Sanu. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, and a big loss here as he's taken down. Whitney Merciless, showing no mercy, flies in for the sack. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Final play of the half, it's Ryan. He'll rifle this one deep right side. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. So we come up on halftime with nine points separating these two teams. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught up with what's going on around the NFL here in Week 5. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. And the Panthers are out in front as they play the second quarter. Cam Newton with a couple of touchdown passes there. From there, we're off to Tennessee to check on the Titans at home in Nashville. And they trail the visiting Bills in that ball game at halftime. Josh Allen has a touchdown pass. Finally, let's get down to the Bayou. Check on the Saints at home at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. And they've got the lead in their matchup with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Drew Brees has thrown a touchdown pass. In our game, it was the former MVP, Matt Ryan, with a strong first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one fielded at the five. Then he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. And he loses the football a second time. And the Falcons grab it. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. 
And they came out of the locker trailing. Not a good way to start this second half with their first drive. Can't imagine that the discussion at halftime encompassed this at all. In fact, I'm sure they talked about, okay, kind of wipe the slate clean, start the 